Today I'm giving you my top five tips from a board certified OBGYN on how to prepare for an induction of labor. So let's get started. Welcome back friends, Dr. Jennifer Lincoln here, board certified OBGYN and social media educator. And today we are talking about labor induction and how to prepare. Before I get started, if you wanna go ahead and get more content like this, please go ahead and subscribe and turn on the bell so you get notified every time I make a new YouTube. So I'm not gonna to cover today why induction of labor is done. That's a whole other topic and I'm sure I will get to that at some point. But what I do wanna discuss today is if you are having an induction of labor, how to prepare for that. Because feeling prepared, educated and empowered can leave you with such a better experience along the way. And that's what I want for you today. So let's go. First tip, I do want you to make sure that your induction of labor is necessary. So in my show notes, I've got references and resources, and I've got three that I think can be really helpful. So we induce labor for lots of different reasons, and I'm not going into all of that today, but if your healthcare provider recommends an induction of labor, I just wanna make sure that you know that you have a choice and that you can say, why is it recommended? Maybe that the answer is very clear. For example, if you've got severe preeclampsia, and it's time to have a baby, that can make sense. There are some other reasons that might not seem so clear, and if you have no idea why, and it's because your doctor said, well, hey, we can induce your labor, that way I can deliver your baby because I'm going out of town next week, uh, maybe that's not such a strong reason. So the first tip is to understand why you're having your labor induced and to feel good about that choice. My second tip is to be informed. How informed you are can really set you up for a successful induction of labor. And I'm not just talking physically, but I'm talking mentally too. And that is just as important because how you perceive your birth and your birth experience and your birth outcome can affect you for years down the road and it matters. So in my show notes, I've got three sources that I think can be really helpful to help you understand what happens in an induction of labor. One is from the American College of OBGYN, one is from the March of Dimes, and the third is from the Mayo Clinic. And I think they're all really easy to understand, so go ahead and check them out. So it's about going to good sources and not going to Facebook necessarily when it comes to figuring out what an induction is like. Because here's what happens. You post, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna meet my little guy in a week. I'm getting induced. Friends, can you tell me what your induction was like? And I'm not saying you shouldn't ask your friends about their experiences, but take it with a grain of salt because a lot of time people share their experience in great detail when it's like a complete horror story and there's just a little bias there. So just make sure you're going to good sources and this comes to websites too about birth and it can be hard to understand which ones are reliable, which ones aren't. That's why I've included some good ones in my show notes. And if you're not sure and you're checking one out, you can always ask your healthcare provider if they think it's a good place to get information from. Being informed also means understanding what will happen. So when your doctor or your midwife you know, schedules you for an induction, it's okay to ask and say, so what are we going to do? How does this work? And you can understand the methods they're thinking. You can understand why they're doing it again. You can understand who's going to be there at your induction, people that you might meet. So that way there's less unknowns and you feel more at peace with what is going to happen. Third tip, bring the good stuff to your induction of labor. And here's what I'm talking about. Inductions of labor can take a while. Sometimes they take days. And as long as you and your baby are doing okay, that's fine. But it can get kind of boring. And so bringing some things from home to help you feel a little more entertained and also feel a little more comfortable in a hospital environment can just make it a little more bearable. So I'm talking about bringing your iPad, your laptop, bring the chargers, don't forget the chargers. Bring a good book, magazines, bring a game, bring a puzzle, just, you know, something to just kind of take your mind off of things. You might also want to bring some creature comforts of home. So your own snacks, your own drinks, good toiletries, maybe your own pillow and blanket, but be okay with them not coming home or getting stained because birth can be a little messy. Just understand that if you are having a hospital birth, it doesn't have to be this sterile experience and you can make it feel more comfortable. Fourth tip, and maybe the one that I feel is the most important is to channel your inner patience. Bring your patients to your induction of labor and make sure that your medical team has patients too. So what do I mean by that? I just said that inductions of labor can sometimes take days and yeah, like 36, 48, 72 hours, it's not unheard of. And so it's important to have that mindset of being patient and understand that people along the way who have said, well, my induction took six hours or eight hours or it went so quick. Don't let that defeat you. Every birth is different. And it's also really important that your medical team has that same patience. So when you're talking to your provider or you're talking to your labor and delivery nurse, it's okay to say, I've heard inductions can take a while. And I just wanna make sure that there's not some fake timeline here that if we hit 24 hours, I have to have a C-section because that's not how it should work. 
And so just making sure that you were in that mental headspace of knowing it can take some time as well as your medical team can guarantee that you've got your best shot at a successful induction of labor and a vaginal delivery. My fifth and final tip is to set boundaries. So I mean boundaries with people from home. There's nothing more defeating than when you're having an induction of labor and maybe it's taking a while and you're constantly having people texting or messaging you. Is the baby here yet? Is he here? What's taking so long? Oh my goodness. Because that doesn't help, right? That kind of interference just adds more stress to the picture. So set boundaries. Maybe you decide to keep your phone off or you hand it to your partner and you let them run the interference with all of those communications. Maybe you don't even tell people that you're having an induction of labor because you don't want to be bothered and you'll let them know when the baby's here, when he or she is here and you're ready to share. It's also important to set boundaries with your medical team. Yes, I'm saying this as an OBGYN, it is not unheard of, but it's okay to say, do I need that cervical exam right now? Or, you know, I have been up for 24 hours straight and I know we're about to start Pitocin. Is it safe for me and my baby to just get a little break and give me a you know, a couple hours of a nap here so that I can kind of just reset. All of these things are well within your right and your team should want to partner with you so that you feel heard, cared for, and you're ready to go and meet your baby when he or she is ready to arrive. Okay, those are my five quick tips to help you have a successful induction of labor, not only physically, but really more so mentally because I think that we often ignore that part of the birth process and it's so important. It's just critical and we need to do better with that. If you have any tips for how to prepare for your induction of labor, go ahead and drop them in the comments. I would love to hear and go ahead and follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I've got a lot more content related to labor and birth and I'm gonna get a lot more here soon on my YouTube I promise disclaimer here at the end I'm a doctor I'm not your doctor nothing I reviewed today counts as medical advice for your specific induction of labor so if you have questions or concerns speak up and ask the providers who know you best all right friends stay safe and happy birthing bye-bye